Are you ready for pain? Are you ready for suffering? If the answer is yes, then you're ready. So why is Kyle Rittenhouse's name trending again on social media? Well, the foolish moron has a new book out that he's trying to sell. But I can tell you right now it's not going to sell because the people that might buy the book can't read. Anybody who thinks this kid is a hero is very, very stupid. He was breaking the law, number one. He shouldn't have been an, a 17-year-old with an AR-15. This wasn't protecting his community because he didn't live there. And no of his, none of his immediate friends or family members owned any businesses there. And number three, we know that he was dreaming just days earlier, caught on audio, in his own words, of shooting people that were looting. He was already thinking about this, that he wanted to shoot people with his AR-15, a wannabe stupid 17-year-old. Was it self-defense? Sure, I'll buy that, but he should have never been there to begin with. Why do Republicans look at Kyle Rittenhouse as a hero? Why do Republicans look at the McCloskeys as heroes, pointing guns at Black Lives Matter protesters? Why is it that the Republicans put these types of people like Kyle Rittenhouse on some sort of pedestal? Why is that, ladies and gentlemen? Kyle Rittenhouse is the opposite of a hero. Heroes are our brave men and women in uniform who risk their life for our freedom, the brave firefighters, and the good cops out there. Kyle Rittenhouse was a stupid and still is a stupid kid who thought that he could just be a vigilante and show up there and be a tough guy with his AR-15. And it is so dangerous to call this kid a hero. And it is so dangerous for far-right Republicans out there to praise his behavior because then you're inciting violence and you're saying, hey, if you're 17 years old, Go get an illegal AR-15 and go to a protest. And, you know, if you have to shoot people in self-defense, go ahead and do it. I mean, these are the types of people that speak at the Republican National Convention. Uh, it's dangerous. It's silly. And anybody who buys Kyle Rittenhouse's book is disgusting and deplorable. I'm trending again on social media. Well, the foolish moron has a new book. Out. I'm still confused about the case. First off, I have my doubts about how much self-defense there actually was. You know, sometimes people just want to unalive someone with a pew pew. And I think that's our little Kyle. I think he's a sociopath. Is it not illegal for a 17 year old to have said AR 15 pew pew? And is it not also illegal for his mother to drive him across state lines with said pew pew? Why is nobody punished? A pat on the back. Oh! We're so sorry that happened to you, Kyle. You're a hero. A hero. Oh, please. Probably be running for Senate or governor or some shit pretty soon. Disgusting. Absolutely disgusting. Today is Kyle Rittenhouse Day, everyone. The three-year anniversary of when a white kid shot three other white people in self-defense and was labeled a white supremacist for it. When Kyle Rittenhouse shot three left-wing protesters who attacked him, and by some coincidence, one turned out to be a pedophile and the other two turned out to be domestic abusers. It was three years ago today when riots broke out in Kenosha, Wisconsin over the police shooting of a man named Jacob Blake, who was attempting to kidnap children from his baby mama who he had been accused of sexually assaulting, and had tried to stab a police officer when he was shot in the back and paralyzed from the waist down. But the left-wingers burned down Kenosha over this, and a 17-year-old kid from Antioch, Illinois, Kyle Ritten house went with his friend that night to guard a business from rioters with AR-15s that they legally owned. And Kyle Rittenhouse was putting out a fire in the parking lot at a local business when a man named Joseph Rosenbaum attacked him. That guy. Rittenhouse tried to run away, but his avenues of escape were all cut off. That was when a shot was fired by somebody in the crowd of rioters. Rittenhouse then turned around and aimed the barrel of his AR-15 at Joseph Rosenbaum, who was continuing to chase him. Rosenbaum then lunged for the barrel of his rifle when Kyle Rittenhouse shot him in the head. After the mob saw Kyle Rittenhouse shoot Joseph Rosenbaum, they then chased him down the street. And that was when a man named Anthony Huber smashed him over the head with a skateboard and knocked him to the ground. Rittenhouse turned around and shot him in self-defense as well. And that was when a third man named Gage Groyskwitz pulled out a pistol and aimed it at Rittenhouse. And, and that was when Rittenhouse shot him as well. Grossquitz would survive. And despite the fact that all of this was on video, Kyle Rittenhouse was mercilessly smeared in the media. Democrats called him a domestic terrorist. They claimed that he was a white supremacist, despite the fact there was no evidence of this, and that all of the people he shot were in fact white. 
Joe Biden even put him in one of his campaign ads during the 2020 election in which he called Rittenhouse a white supremacist. Rittenhouse was then arrested and held in jail for several months in which he said that from October 30th to November 20th, he did not take a shower. Pretty disgusting. If we were a proper country, Kyle Rittenhouse never would have been charged with anything because the video evidence clearly showed that he was attacked. Yet a politically motivated prosecutor forced him into court anyway, and he was eventually found not guilty by the jury. Three years have passed, but left-wingers still refuse, refuse to tell the truth about it. No, Kyle Rittenhouse did not cross state lines with a weapon. The AR-15 he used was purchased by his friend who lived in Kenosha and was already there. No, he was not part of a militia. No, he was not a white supremacist. No, he did not shoot any black people. No, he did not use an illegal gun. And no, he did not have any connection to the town of Kenosha. He worked as a lifeguard in the city and his dad lived there. And no, self-defense is not a crime. Thankfully, the jury in the trial recognized this, even if the left still doesn't. Come on, guys, for my boy, he did nothing wrong. Oh, uh, uh, what, what did he do? Oh, he... Well, he traveled across state lines, illegally obtained a gun, illegally brought it across said state lines, um, went to a peaceful protest, and then, like, killed two people. What the fuck? Well, was, was it, like, in self-defense? 100% self-defense. Absolutely. Well, where's, where's the person shot? Shot. In the, in the back? But, like, they were def attacking them from behind. It was like a, it's like a back kick kind of thing. I'm confused. So they killed two people... And shot shot one in the back in self de I'm having a hard time matching the angles, but I think I'm following you. Well, how much was their bail? Bail was two million. Jesus, that's it? The, he killed two people. Who paid for it? You know, a little white supremacist here, a little neo-Nazi here, and they pulled through and they made it happen. Your boy is a fucking terrorist. Kyle Rittenhouse, remember him, that punk who drove into Wisconsin a while back with a gun? underage, shot three people, one of them unarmed, two of them died, but he was acquitted on the grounds of self-defense. Well, he showed up in North Dakota today by video to testify in favor of a bill pending that would require the state to reimburse anyone who is charged and later acquitted on the grounds of self-defense self-defense this punk got away with murder now the bill itself you could argue one way or the other I suppose on legalistic grounds and have a perfectly reasonable argument about it but the very fact that they chose this bastard to testify in favor that's pretty goddamn crass hey it's Monday and you know what I don't think enough people know the Republican publishing racket is real Tomorrow, Marjorie Taylor Greene's ghost-written crap book full of lies and treason, printed by Donald Trump Jr.'s money laundering printing press service called Winning Team Press. Yeah, you're a real winning team, you fuckwads. Anyway, aside from that domestic terrorist putting a book out tomorrow, which the RNC will buy up in bulk and she'll make more millions and nobody will read it and it'll end up collecting dust on a shelf. I understand this, but still, got a book out. She's going to make millions of dollars from it. Look who else has a book coming out. That is 100% real. That is real. I contend a double murderer and a traitor to the United States shouldn't be allowed to profit from their crimes against humanity. Instead, they should both be in prison because people died because of what they did. January 6th has a body count. Please don't forget about that. And please also don't forget how Marjorie Taylor Greene was at the White House bragging about plotting January 6th before she was ever sworn into office. And yet she still remains loyal to Trump even after not getting the pardon she was promised. I wonder why. This also serves as a reminder that I'm a writer and I wrote a book that I self-published and have been struggling to get out into the world because Elon is suppressing me on Twitter because I tell the truth about domestic terrorists and traitors to the United States. And I also tell the truth about Elon and he doesn't like it. Now my book is a rock, hey, there's Duke. My book is a rock and roll love story that has nothing to do with politics, pretty much. 
And I contend that I should be outselling the domestic terrorists who are backed by the RNC. The RNC is not going to buy up my book in bulk and falsely inflate the sales so that it becomes a quote unquote bestseller. I need to become a bestseller in the right way. So our Monday motivation is to blast the sound of settling into the stratosphere, my friends. Look at these reviews. Don't you want to read a book that everybody says they can't put down? They've fallen in love with the characters and they want to see the streaming series? Of course you do. Today's Monday. Let's see where we are by Friday. But let's hope that I'm outselling both Marjorie and the double murderer. Okay. Happy Monday, everybody. If you still don't believe white privilege exists, this is a perfect example. Kyle went to a protest voluntarily with an AR-15 shot and killed two people and claimed self-defense when they weren't attacking him. Shocking, the jury was almost all white. There's also a video of him weeks before the protest saying he wants to shoot rounds of his AR at these people outside of CVS. The jury never saw that though because the judge said it wasn't relevant. In the same week Julius Jones was on death row, thousands of people had to call and Kim Kardashian had to get involved for his death sentence to get reduced to life in prison without parole. I would say imagine if Kyle was black on this trial, but he wouldn't have even gotten a trial because if a black person walked around with an AR-15, he would have been shot on sight. The system is so disgustingly, blatantly fucked, I don't know how people still try and defend it. What did I tell y'all? What did I tell y'all? This kid right here, 17 years old, walked in a protest, he came with an armed militia, started shooting people. Started shooting people. Now, there's a whole lot of misconceptions of, of why he started shooting people and why he was being chased at first. He was being chased because he shot somebody first. Then the crowd started chasing him. Then he tripped over himself and, and proceeded to fire shots into other people, killing two people. And that is, that, that's not even a crazy part. He ran towards the police with an AR-15 that you see him with after killing two people. And he embraced them. They let him in. And he went home. He went home after killing two people before being arrested. His name is Kyle, 17. This is crazy. That's why I'm telling y'all, y'all have to be safe at these protests. That's why I say y'all got to either be scrapped at these protests or don't go because these people want to harm y'all. These white supremacists want to harm us. Now, it's going to be some crap when the NFAC find out about this and go to Wisconsin.